Hey peeps, this is Mango. Welcome back to episode 4 of the Computer Craft Tutorial Series. Today what we'll be taking a look at is RedNet and wireless communications and maybe even wired if I get around to it. So, what is the benefits and what can we use wired and wireless connections for? Well, sometimes you want to create a multi a multi-stage system with computers so you can link up your whole base with different computers you can hook up like a big screen that hooks up to another hooks up to a big reactor. Um, from the big reactors mod, and it's very, very interactive. You can get, you can do a lot with wireless. First of all, on the screen you will see um, the, commu the computer craft uh, wiki. Now the wiki is a very, very helpful website. I learned a lot of the stuff I know there. Very clear information. I'm pretty sure they're actively updating it, so I recommend you guys go check it out. Um, there's, I'm guessing there'll be a link on the screen if I get the annotations working, if I actually remember. But anyway. That's just a little bit of information. Make sure to consult the Computer Craft Wiki if my tutorials are not as clear as you would like them to be, which is perfectly understandable. Anyway, before, after, because I've done enough rambling, we're going to get started onto this. So, RedNet. Uh, RedNet is a system incorporated by Mind Factory Reloaded. So, if you look up Mind Factory Reloaded here, if you can see, this is a mod. It's not. It's a it's a very very good mod, but we're not going to be interested in the actual mechanics today. Instead, we'll be taking a look at the Rednet pipes. These guys, but we won't actually be using them. Instead, they will be using an API implemented by them. But that's not the point right now. So you can see, I've got two computers. I'm going to break these because I was just testing it before. So these are two wireless modems. Wireless modems. Uh, you can also use um, wired modems, but that's up to you. Ah, we need to use R, don't we? So this is the recipe, ender pearl and eight stone, and all you have to do is place it on any side of your computer. I use the right side most of the time, just for sake of convenience, but any any side will do. So I've just run a few programs here. I'm just going to go, I'm going to create a new program, and I'm going to call it, uh, let's see, send. Edit send. So the first thing we've got to do, so, let's go, okay, what's our objective here? We're going to get this computer to send a message to this computer, and this computer will receive it. And we can customize this later, and we can even send it to Turtles. We can even send it to a pocket computer, which is this. Which is one of these guys. These guys are really cool, and we'll get into them soon. Anyway, so first let's get any eye off my screen, because I don't like coding with that on there. So what we're going to do is we go and go, we're going to go rednet.openwrite. So basically... When this program runs, you can there'll be a little red uh, outline around this thing, and that'll show that's actually on. So we we can we can do that, and I'll I'll, I'll program that in a bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go rednet. Dot broadcast. Hello. So the broadcast. So this basically just opens the modem. This allows it to send and receive. This allows it. This broadcasts all computers. Now, before we go on, there is what is called broad, um, sorry, not broadcasts, protocols. Protocols are like channels that you can communicate with on text, text channels. So if, if you want one part of your base to be on one protocol and another part of your base on another protocol, then you can do that. So the broadcast function basically just outputs the, um, what this says to all of the computers hooked up to that protocol. But we won't, we won't, be, we won't be investigating protocols right now. Let's get rid of this ring because that is very annoying. Um, we won't be investigating protocols. Instead, we'll just leave it. If you wanted, to, if you actually want to put protocols on, you can put a, another argument on. But we'll go into that later if I get around to it. So I'll go control, and we'll run this. Nothing happened. This computer's not doing anything. Well, that was a previous log. But still, look, well, you can see a red outline going around. This means that the that means that this means that the modem's actually on and it's ready to operate. So what we need to do is we need to get this computer to receive. How do we do that? We'll, we'll go edit, receive. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go, we need to open the modem once again on the right side. Like that. And we're going to go red net. Okay, we need to do this differently. So first we're going to create a variable. Actually, no. First I'll show you what happens if you do it the way you'd normally think it would be done. So we'll go, so we're going to actually... And that's a little bit confusing. We're going to go print rednet dot receive. I'll show you what happens because this isn't really the right way. So first of all, you can see between these two arguments of the print, which is what to print, it'll actually print what this command runs. That's that's probably a little bit confusing, but you'll see what I mean. 
So I'll exit out and we'll go save and we'll run receive. It's not receiving anything, but let's run this again. Okay. There we are. We just got hello. But there's some issues here. There's a there's a there's a there's a um what I'm trying to say here. A, a zero on the front, and that's not what we want. So what we have to do is we have to modify the send program. Sorry, the receive program. Apologies. So we're going to go edit receive. But we have to actually create a variable. Well, we don't, you don't have to, but this is a very easy way. So first we're going to put local, just like I always do. So make sure it's only exclusive to this program. We're going to go sender. Uh, hang on, let me think. We have to go sender, and then protocol... I know this isn't the right order, but I'll have to change it a little bit. And hang on a second. Okay, sorry, it wasn't the right order. I have to put message and then protocol. Now, we won't, be, once again, we won't be using protocol. We won't be using the channels. It will just use a universal um, universal channel. So, okay, we actually have to put an equals on the end of this. So, rednet.receive. Okay, so what's going on here? Now, this is what is called a... I'm pretty sure it's Array, if I remember correctly. I know this is a little bit... This is like the captain of the Titanic teaching sailing lessons. But this, I believe, is called an Array, and it stores multiple values within within a variable. Actually, I don't think it's called an Array. But anyway, it, it stores multiple values within one variable. And basically, you can reference to any of these variables within this. That was probably a little confusing. Basically, this returns three different values sender, message, and protocol. And we'll, be only be, we'll only be using message for now. If you're um, if you're confused about what the sender is, if we just exit out for a sec, and we'll go type in ID, you can see this is computer number four. If we go over here and exit, and just go type in ID, this is computer zero. So with the different computers in your world, you'll see that there's different IDs. So if you put down test and type in ID, you can see this is this is computer three. We've actually labeled it test. And we can we can label these computers as well. Okay, so let's edit receive again, and we'll go down to the next line, and we'll go print message. So this is going to just print this part of the variable. Let's go out and let's hit receive again. So it's gonna it's waiting for it's waiting for response, and what we'll do we'll go send again, and on the other screen there we are. We've oh voice cracked. We've received hello. There's a problem though. Why would just why would we just want to be sending hello constantly? Like you wouldn't be want to be like if you want to just want to say hello constantly, that wouldn't be very useful of a chat program. Anyway, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so it can actually customize what you can send. So what we'll do is we're gonna go local once again just to make sure this is only the variable is only exclusive to the program, and we're gonna go message. So this is the variable that we're assigning this to, read, and we can do that. So th this is basically reading what the user inputs. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to replace this with message. So it's just going to send what we actually put in. I'm just going to quit out, and we're going to get this guy to start receiving, like that. So he's going to wait for a message, and then we're going to go send. So it's asking us for an input now. We're going to say, hi there, mango box can send it and voila we've got we've got the message that we sent there okay so after we've learned how to communicate wirelessly what we're going to do is we're going to try and get a bit of a remote control system going so we can type something in the computer and the turtle will do it for us so first of all you must keep in mind that these have a limited range of i believe about 64 blocks or i could be wrong about that around about around about there so First of all, we have to get a we have to get a wireless receiver on this guy. Now we can just get one of these guys, some of these guys, but they don't have picks on them. You can you can put picks on them, but how do you do it? So let's turn off any eye once again because I hate it when I'm recording. So what we, what we've got to do is we've got to equip the wireless modem onto this guy. You can see he doesn't have a wireless modem by default. So I'm going to put a wireless modem in his first slot, and this is because this is a default program. I'm going to hit equip one right and you can see he's equipped it and it's on his right side the next thing we're going to do is we're going to going to make a program that will receive that will receive commands from this computer but first we actually have to write the program for it so we're going to go 
I've just been fiddling around there. Um, I'm going to go edit turtle. So this is going to be our program. We probably don't need to do this, but if we... Well, it, it's up to you whether you want to do this. If you've already opened it, there's no need to do this. But you're better off doing this anyway. So, we're going to go rednet.open. And then what we're going to do is we're going to read the user's input. So what we're going to... So, okay. We'll do this. Print. Please import the direction of the turtle. The direction of command for the turtle. Okay. So then we're going to go... Okay, it's raining again. So we're going to go... Uh, let's see. Local read equals read. And this will actually figure out what the user inputs. Okay. So... First of all, we're going to do if read equals equals uh, forward. Uh, is it then? I'm pretty sure it's then. Do. We'll see if do does it. Okay. So, do rednet.send to... Uh, hang on a second. I have just realized we don't actually have to do it here. So... I'll explain what I'm doing in, in a second. So we're actually going to get Turtle to figure out what what to do with the command by itself. So we're going to go uh, rednet dot send and looking over at the wiki the wiki here. Sorry, we're going to go. Uh, so let's let's what, what idea is this? this is number three. Okay, so we're going to go send three. So this is going to send it to the turtle, and we're going to send it to read, and we don't need to put any protocol in, because this is just going to be an, an open an open system, so we're going to go, let's see if this will work. Okay, turtle and expected string, what's going on here? Red nut dot open, okay, yeah, I see, right, <laughs> that'll be why. Turtle. Okay, so now it's asking us for the input, so we're going to go right. And it's sent a message, but this guy hasn't really done anything, has he? So we're, we're going to do something. So we're going to go edit command. We'll call this, we'll call this command. And we'll go rednet.open on the right side. I always like putting it on the right side because it's a kind of a generic side for putting it on for me. It might not be for others. So this will open the red net on the other side. Once again, this is a limited connection, so make sure there's plenty of space um, for the turtle communicate. Also, I believe that all the rain also, the, the the range also reduces when it's raining. So after it's done that, we'll go red net dot receive. Actually, we'll put this in a for loop or while loop, while loop I should say. So it would. So it will just continue. It will just continually receive commands. So we're going to go rednet dot receive. Uh, yeah, that'll do. And then to receive it, we are going to need a string protocol filter. Okay, yeah, we need to assign a variable to this, don't we? Now we have to update the variable every time the, the while loop runs, because if we just update it once, it always receives the same command. So we're going to go message, sorry, uh, sender, message, protocol. We won't be using protocol again. Equals rednet dot receive. I always put the I for it before um, the E, and that really annoys me. It took me a while to figure out what was going on there. Okay, so that should be good. Let's just check that's going good. Okay, we actually have to receive it. From, I believe it is 4. So that's just receiving it from that computer over there. After that, that so that will basically just... That will just... Uh, every time this the while loop runs, it will update this variable. Sorry if I'm being a little bit unclear here. It's a little bit hard to say all these things. So we're going to go... Uh, let's see here. If message equals equals uh, forward... 
So this is what I was going to do over there, but I figured it would be a little bit easier if we did it over here. Do. Actually, I think it's then, now that I think of it. Uh, message equals forward, then turtle dot forward. You can probably see where this is going at this point. Let's go end. So we're gonna do we're gonna do another one of these. We're gonna go uh, left, then turtle dot left. I think it's turn left actually. So this is gonna make make the turtle turn left, obviously. We're gonna do this one more time. Actually, I don't think it's one more time, but anyway. Message equals right. Then you can all remember that you can also customize anything within the red brackets. Um, sorry, the red the red text because that's up to you. And you can you can this is gonna be applied differently. You can make the total. You can even replace these with break and replace that with break as well. And you can make the total break stuff. And then we're gonna go total dot turn right. end and this will be the last one just to make sure this will this will just make sure uh okay, I should put if this will this will just this will provide a little bit of a basic knowledge or a little bit of a inspiration for you guys to figure out how to or ins, in, inspire you guys to uh motive motivate to 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 make your own programs like Fill around with wireless communications. You can even determine coordinates. Total dot back, I believe it is. Okay, that should work. Although well, I might be completely wrong about this. Okay, so it's running. That's great. So you can see the red outlines going along the outside. That's a good thing. And we're gonna go. We're gonna turtle again, and we're gonna turn right. Did you turn right? You sure did. Let's do it again. Turtle forward. There we go, he's moved forward, I think. Right? Let's just do that. Let's just do that one more time. He was he was aligned with the lights, if I'm correct. Yeah, he was aligned with the lights, so you can see he's moving forward. Let's do this again, and we're gonna go turtle, turn let's make sure left is working. Yeah, he turned left. So that's a really, really it's a really, really easy way to control your turtle remotely. You can you can even use automated programs to just run your turtle around your base and like if you if you're standing over here and if you're standing over here and you need something done, you might go over to your computer, type in a command, and the turtle will come over to you. It's it's there's a lot of opportunities with this. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this computer cup tutorial episode. I'll be doing a little bit more of this stuff. I'm really enjoying recording this series actually, and next episode we'll be getting into uh, uh, maybe pocket computers and investigating how to make a little bit more wireless communications. I don't know yet, but anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.